Oh, good afternoon, all of you beautiful people who are enjoying this incredible energy of Scorpio New Moon. The new moon is tomorrow at 5.14 p.m., about a little over 24 hours from now. Um, I am on the east coast of the United States, and when I look at this chart, I find it pretty striking in many, many ways. This is the new moon, sun and moon together, and rising opposite Albion and Uranus. So, um, I have bad boy Uranus rising in this chart. Now, it will be different for your time and location. So, um, however, the energy that I share with you is relevant to you because Taurus, I mean, um, Uranus will be rising at some point during the day during this new moon window for you. So, new moon at 12 40 Scorpio. If there were nothing else on the chart, that would be enough to rock your boat because it's Scorpio. Scorpio, the things we don't talk about, the aspects of life where we may have one degree of trauma or another around sex, death, money, desire. Um, all of these things that go to really integrate our humanity, our selfhood. And we have been told that there is something wrong about all of these Scorpio issues and there's something wrong with us if we demonstrate them. And I just um, got off a little exchange with some of my folks who are saying, What's going on? I'm feeling hammered. And even saying, it's Scorpio. I don't do well as Scorpio. And it's possible that you, you don't do well in Scorpio. In the Northern Hemisphere, Scorpio is finally the end of summer. I just stepped outside. It's cold out there. Um, and that shift can, it really does push us inward. And when we get pushed inward, distractions are, um, there are fewer distractions and we have to look at the things that maybe we've been too busy to look at throughout the summer and the fall. So Scorpio does that for us. It's a great gift. And then there are some of us like Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, I am Scorpio Rising, where Scorpio feels good. Um, I feel good. Now, I did pull an all-nighter last night. Um, I'm, I'm operating on no sleep. But I also understand why looking at this chart, because Vesta and Magdalena are in a conjunction in Scorpio near the, near the new moon. Um, they're definitely pouring their energy into the new moon in Scorpio. And it's no surprise that I spent all night, I had to wait till after dark, basically after midnight, be, to channel the details of the Vesta Womb Priestess Initiation that I am beginning to offer people. And so I'm just laughing that uh, these two are on my Ascendant, on my Saturn, saying, you're not sleeping, you're working. <laughs> We've got something to tell you. We, there's work for you to do. Um, you can sleep later. So some of us, I mean, this is the thing about planets. You know, you think, don't fight it, surrender. Work with the energy, not against it. And so for those of you um, who are feeling hammered by the new moon energy, by the Sun in Scorpio, by Mars in Scorpio. Mars has just entered Scorpio, and he, he is one of Scorpio's rulers, the ancient ruler before Pluto of Scorpio. So he's the boss right now. Um, and he's also got an aspect going on to Pholus. Pholus is um, 
he's kind of like a hair trigger Uranus. I'll, I'll talk to those guys. Um, this is a Divine Feminine Astrology reading. I usually focus on goddesses, um, but I have to do right by all the energy that's in this chart right now. So, Mars is there. Sun and Moon are there. Scorpio itself is there. So if you need to sleep through this new moon, sleep. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Don't fight it, surrender. And Scorpio also works a lot with the unconscious uh, the, because a lot of these Scorpio issues have been pushed down. And things in this chart are also relating to the unconscious bubbling up. Um, and so do not push it down and do not fret over it if you can help it. Because if you sleep, you will dream. If you rest, you will allow this stuff to bubble up, metabolize, and integrate. We do not have to relive our traumas in order to heal them. That's, that's a big one because we love our stories. I have been telling the same story for years for some of my stuff and it feels good. It scratches an itch, but it's not healing. Not over and over and over again. No, it works the groove. So sleep, let your unconscious do the work. Trust that everything is metabolizing, is integrating, and you can get the full benefit of this new moon without lifting a finger, if that's what's required. Now, if you're like me, Scorpio rising, you may have some fingers to lift. There may be some heavy lifting, but it's joyful heavy lifting, and there's so much help here. Mars and Scorpio pours intense erotic energy into the Scorpio And Magdalena is bringing feminine Christ consciousness. We've got two priestesses together um, in the 20s, the last third of Scorpio, Magdalena and Vesta. So they both have the priestess energy. Um, Vesta is the sacred erotic flame that is how we activate our divine energy, how it affects our sexuality, our creativity, and our connection to divine, our understanding um, of our own spirituality. It is fuel for our spiritual life. And Vesta represents devotion. This is something you give your loving attention to. Adoration, cherishing, service in the most gentle and pleasurable and embodied way. With a lot of spaciousness. Space for things to happen. Space to receive. Space to rest. <sighs> That's going on at this new moon in Scorpio. And the new moon is in an exact opposition to a conjunction that's been going on for a, a, a year and a half or more since they've been tra they traveled through Aries together and they've been dancing together through the first uh, third of Uranus. And that is Albion and Uranus. Albion is the thresholder. He stands for the ones who hold open the gates at the thresholds. And for us human beings in this form here on earth, that is birth, and in, coming in, death, the threshold going out, and then sexuality, orgasm, the threshold of transformation that is inherent with us all. We, 
It's a part, it's a huge part of our human experience and our connecting, our rootedness between these two worlds, the world of form and the world of spirit. So Albion holds those gates and he is the patron planet of the people who serve in this way, who are midwives and doulas and um, people who attend people at death, hospice workers and doctors and nurses who frequently are with people at the end of life. And then people like me who teach sexuality and sex education for adults and orgasm coaches, sex therapists, people like that. Especially when there is a spiritual and kind of metaphysical component to the teaching and the support. So that's opposite. And that sets up a kind of a lot of project, projection. It's kind of a feedback loop. The sun and the moon are looking across the sky saying, who are you? And kind of drinking that energy in from across the sky. And Uranus and Albion are doing the same thing. They're picking up that Scorpio and saying, ooh, how can we help this? I mean, Albion is a Scorpio being over in Taurus. And Uranus is, what did I just say? Uh, he doesn't give a fuck. He will throw anything at you just to see what you do. <laughs> how, how do you respond? Um, and in some ways, don't take it personally. I mean, we take it personally because here we are projecting. But um, Uranus is... <laughs> There are a lot of chords in, in the astrology, many different planets that have a similar energy, but they activate it a different way. Some may activate it in a really deep way, some in a big explosive way, some in a shocking, I didn't see that coming way. And Uranus is, I didn't see it coming, but you know it's the ground beneath your feet that, are sh that is shaking. So there's something kind of very big and massively energetic about the way Uranus shows up with shock and awe. And then I mentioned that Mars in, uh, at 3.33 Scorpio tomorrow, that's interesting. Who does numerology? Get, give me 333. What? Put it in the comments if you're watching. Um, Pholus is at 323 Capricorn. And Pholus is a shamanic centaur. He does ritual healing, moving between the worlds. And he also um, liked his drink. And he made a mistake that created a big war that caused a lot of havoc. And it all involved with just taking the lid off of a jar, a jar of wine, and it wreaked havoc. So Pholus is known as small cause, big effect, and we can think of it as a detonator of something really big. And we can look at that, a, a lot of times it portends disaster something that happens like that, we humans tend to attach crisis and disaster to it, especially if there's mythology that backs that up. But just on the face of it, small co cause big effect could mean, uh, you know, raking in a 500% a profit on cryptocurrency or um, having something really extraordinary and wonderful happening that you didn't see coming. At least that's how I like to frame it. So be aware that this energy is there and it can shock the system whether it is quote good and desired or whether it um, feels like uh, a disaster. So we've got 
We've got Uranus opposite. We've got Pholus communicating with Mars, which is a pretty intense combo. Um, the Sun and Moon are talking to Nessus. So here in this time, just right after Samhain, this new moon is plugging into the ancestral wounds and all that stuff that comes up to be healed. Uh, that's emphasized right now. What else have we got going? Okay, this is what I wanted to talk about because there's even more. Well, this for healing, at nine degrees, Pisces is Pallas Athene and nine degrees Virgo is Psyche. And Psyche is, um, we have a lot of aspects between planets that symbolize the ways that we are wounded, the ways that we feel small or inadequate or unworthy or self-loathing or any of those things. And then they are paired either in an opposition or a conjunction or some other aspect with a planet that kind of provides the energy of a solution. And Pallas Athene is in many ways the opposite of Psyche. Psyche was a hapless young woman who just kind of followed what people told her to do and got into all kinds of trouble. She just, one, one thing after another went wrong for her. And she made it through fine. She actually went through an initiation process out of that, but she very much represents just this, this um, person without agency. She has not discovered her sovereignty yet, and she's looking outside herself to figure out who she is and how she needs to feel and how she needs to behave, and it does not work very well for her. And Pallas Athene is absolutely the opposite. She is ramrod straight in her clarity. She is the strategist, the goddess of war, she's known as to the ancient Greeks. She is a feminine representation of masculine energy, very much of the mind, and my personal word for her is intellectual strength. Coming from a feminine perspective, for women who have a significant Pallas Athene aspect, I look at them and I say, you are well equipped with mental strength, intellectual power, and steadfastness. Things don't rattle you. You're, you're, you can take stock of a situation and lift it up with your mind, uh, solve problems. And of course, there's always a shadow side to that. You can fall into a place of servitude and, and you know, a kind of a disrespecting and devaluing of this gift. But the fact is, it's a potent gift and uh, an excellent balance to psyche. So this is going on at the time of the new moon, and so it's activated for you. And you might look and say, what do I have going on? Where is Pisces in my chart? Where is Virgo in my chart? How is this energy activating me right now? So let's go back to the new moon, the opposition to Albion and Uranus. And then look above uh, to Aries and below, if you're looking at this chart, it, it's above to Aries and below to Gemini. What we have there is a sextile. It, it, well, I call it singing in close harmony. And there are actually five planets involved here. Specifically, Chiron, 918 Aries, 
Lilith asteroid who represents the disowned feminine inside of us, the, the feminine wound, a little bit in common with Psyche, which she's aspecting. So Lilith Asteroid and Chiron have been hanging out together for a while and they have a little bit more time together um, before Lilith will move on, being the faster moving. And that means Chiron is intently mentoring, supporting, and challenging each of us to work with our feminine wound, our, our wounded or disowned Lilith, and to bring her out into power, to let her have her voice, to let her feel her feelings, and then by, by the very act of acknowledging her, she flips out of being disowned to being owned. It doesn't take much, although it can take some getting used to uh, living with it visibly and out loud. Um, and then very close to them is Hecate at um, 14 uh, Aries. She is Trine, the great attractor. So the, the first witch, the crone witch, the crone at the crosswords. Hecate has so many energies because she's so old and every culture she percolates through um, kind of adds something to her story. But she definitely activates the crone when I see her anywhere. And plugged into the great attractor, she is expanded. She is tapped into vastness and brings it. She, To me, she represents a decision because she's... Um, her myth, her story, is that she stands at the crossroads and people will leave offerings at any crossroad because they know Hecate is there. And she is not nice and cuddly. She doesn't say, go here, go there. She says, now is the time for decision. And she kind of holds the space. For us, divine wise beings that we are, to make the decisions that we need to make and to choose the path that's right before us. So she is pulling energy from this vastness that is the great attractor. Um, and she is merging her energy with Lilith and with Chiron. And they are singing with Ceres, who is the Earth, by the way, Oh, I just realized that Ceres and Black Moon Lilith are also in a T-square to Pallas Athena and Psyche, which gives, which plugs that even more into the new moon. So, Ceres at 9.49 and Black Moon Lilith at 12.08 Gemini. They are working together. They are talking to Hecate, Lilith Asteroid, and Chiron. So this is interesting. If you look at the energy of Ceres, she stands for nourishment, and that can be physical nourishment of the foods you choose, emotional nourishment, spiritual nourishment, any kind of nourishment. But she also stands for the Earth herself because the Earth is the one who gives forth our nourishment. And Black Moon Lilith is, is this, the great void of creation who brings things into form. She is like the great goddess version of Lilith who bridges the completely numinous and um, formless mystery and brings it through this portal 
into being alive, into existence, the world of form, which immediately connects it to Ceres. So there we are, two kind of opposite, two, we've got a little bit of polarity energy there, and yet they are merging. They are uh, singing more than close harmony. These two are singing in unison. And what this is doing, this is making a figure that we call in astrology a yod, or a finger of God. Um, there is an aspect, it's called disconjunct, I believe, or a quincunx. <laughs> um, and it's considered a challenging aspect all by itself. Like it's, you know, it's not an opposition and it's not a trine and it's like, well, it's kind of irritating and irritable and nobody likes to read them. But when you get two of them like this, pointing at something, creating the yud, that says pay attention. We are beaming energy. And when you have this opposition here, super, super impacted. It's like this is an literally an arc and it is beaming all of its energy into the new moon. So that intensifies everything. If typically you do all right with the new moon, a little extra self-care, a little extra quiet, telling people to fuck off and leave you alone a little more often, um, that may not be enough. You may need to shut the door and say, do not open this door on pain of death. Mama's sleeping for two days. Um, really be aware that that is a lot of intense energy working with it. And in this chart, which is per peculiar to my location and the time of day here, uh, the Lilith, Chiron, and Hecate, as well as Eris, um, I'm just checking, yep, okay. Um, and even Albion, Albion's rising, but he's still in the 12th house. These are all in the unconscious realms. So they're basically saying, chill out, shut down, relax your mind, and allow all of these energies. These energies are ancestral energies. I look, I look at the planets and I see angels and ancestors. These are divine presences that are communicating with us through the metaphor, the oracle of astrology. So they are operating. Allow them, wherever you live, whatever house this is, allow them to operate in the unconscious and do their work. And you just rest. Rest as much as you can. Take very good care of yourself. Nourish yourself. Nourish yourself. And anything that needs to come into form, that needs to be a thought form that you're aware of, that needs to come into your consciousness and be acted upon once the new moon has passed, Black Moon Lilith will bring that to your awareness. So will Chiron. Because they are, well, um, Ceres is first house, Black Moon Lilith is second house, at least for me sitting here. And uh, so that will come, the, these two, listen, how do I need to nourish myself and care for myself because all this other healing is going on and it's not nothing, it's big. Just feel it, let it go, feel it some more, let it go. Nurt nurt nourish yourself, nurture yourself. And that could mean um, eating light, or it could mean eating a big, fatty, squashy soup 
full of coconut milk and butter, whatever, whatever turns you on. So this is what we have going on. It is a big new moon, possibly the biggest one since June 10th. We had the solar eclipse then, but there was something really light and bright about that. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. No, no, I thought, I, I thought there was uh, something going on, but I'm misreading it. Okay. I'm going to close with that. Have a blessed, blessed new moon. And remember to reach out to me for your natal astrology reading. If you're wondering where all this is going on in your chart, if you have your chart, it's easier to integrate and face what gets thrown at you as the sky goes through its cycles. Very important knowledge to have, and I can help with that. So, it's sunset here. That's my power time. I'm going to go out and sing to the sunset, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.